From the day it was conceived to its first light, the James Webb Space Telescope has always gone as dreaming, dreaming about the things we've never seen, finally ready to be observed in great detail, but also dreaming about the things we had witnessed before, because this powerful tool would allow us to see them in a new light. Quite literally, this marvel of engineering belongs to the family of infrared telescopes. It probes the universe through special lenses, capable of piercing through the immense gas and dust clouds that permeate the universe. Not only does it bring us where we have never been before, it does so in an almost flawless fashion. Webb is like that genius guy in your class who's already solved the math problem way before you could understand the assignment. James Webb has opened a new frontier for science in just more than two years of activity. How did it manage to do so? This video is all about it. Early Universe and Supermassive Black Holes it's hard to believe for those who were not there witnessing the launch, but the ground in French Guiana literally shook as the rockets on the launch vehicle ignited. It was the morning of December 25, 2021. The James Webb Space Telescope was just a matter of hours away from its laboratory, space. When it left the Earth, astrophysics was quite different than it is today, and so was our comprehension of the cosmos. Astronomers used to think that, yes, galaxies are where stars are born, and therefore there must be some mechanism more or less sufficient helping them to ignite. All the models they had about this mechanism were shown to be flawed because James Webb's observations did not match the predictions. After all, it is the most powerful telescope humanity has ever had. Webb could see what we had never seen probing the universe where no other telescope had reached before at a distance that amounts to looking back into the past and unveiling the universe as it was just 500 million years after the Big Bang. Webb saw very young galaxies filled with stars. The news? They were all much, much brighter than any astronomer would have guessed. Our telescope hinted that these youngsters may have been more efficient at creating stars than previously thought. Not only that. Astronomers found out they had been thinking wrong about black holes all this time. Ever since Einstein's predictions of the existence of such objects, science has managed to make some huge steps regarding black holes. Some scientists even took pictures of them, confirming once and for all that those 100-year-old predictions were in fact correct, and that in other words, black holes are real. Nevertheless, there is still so much we have to learn about these big monsters of the cosmos. For instance, we know some of them devour passing stars in clouds of gas and dust, going from being classified as black holes to what is known as supermassive black holes. A supermassive black hole is just a chubby black hole. How does this relate to Webb, you may ask? Good question. The thing is, our buddy has found a bunch of supermassive black holes lurking in the early universe. This left astronomers speechless, as where the hell did these black holes even find the time to grow this much? And where in the universe did they find such an enormous quantity of food? After all, the quantity of matter in the early universe must have been way less than the one we see all around us today. This is a puzzling problem that today's and tomorrow's scientists are and will try to address. Studies that try to address how these behemoths evolve will only be possible thanks to James Webb. Another frontier has been unlocked. The True Hubble Constant's Value Leaving for a moment the early universe behind, Allow me to explain how James Webb, who is very good with numbers, could tell us a bit more about how we came to be in the first place and how we, and in fact the whole universe, will end. There is a constant, perhaps one of the most important numbers to describe the universe we live in. It goes by the name of Hubble constant, and it measures the expansion rate of the universe. A positive value of it means the universe is expanding. A negative one, well, is telling us that everything is inevitably getting closer as time passes by. The higher the Hubble constant's absolute value, the faster the expansion, or the contraction. Hubble was the first one to notice that this constant could actually be measured. He did so by observing cephalid variable stars and type 1a supernovae, which are very good proxies to constrain the expansion of the universe, as they are very bright objects and can be detected at million light-years of distance. Luckily enough, Sir Hubble found our universe is expanding. 
This means that the Hubble constant is positive, and we don't have to worry about getting squeezed by other galaxies or swallowed by an approaching black hole. Measurements based on the observation of the cosmic microwave background model combined with the standard model of cosmology yielded a value of 67 km per second per megaparsec for the Hubble constant. When the Hubble telescope, James Webb's predecessor, kicked in, it provided us with a much better estimate of 73 km per second per megaparsec, meaning that the universe was expanding much faster than previously thought. This groundbreaking discovery has been confirmed to a much higher degree of precision by Webb itself. Having confirmed the absolute value of 73, what does this tell us about our model, giving 67 instead? Simple, we're wrong. Perhaps there's still something we're missing in our models, and this is Webb's way to tell us, look, you're wrong. Future studies might delve deeper into this open problem. For now, the only sure thing is we are moving away from all other galaxies, and all galaxies are moving away from us too. This process will likely continue for billions of years, even when James Webb, you, me, and Earth as a whole would have long disappeared. Stellar Jets in Stellar Nurseries Hey, speaking of you and me, imagine if I put myself between you and the TV while you're watching your favorite series. I bet you'd throw something at me. Something very similar happens to astronomers all the time, especially when their favorite series is newly formed stars. Stars form in dense clouds of gas and dust. These block visible light, and a normal telescope is blind to what happens behind the cloud shield. It doesn't really matter how big or powerful your telescope is. It doesn't even matter if you observe from the ground or from space. If the cloud is dense enough, you'll never be able to see the newborn star. James Webb offers a unique way to understand what is going on behind the dust grains. Its infrared vision allows us to see stars' birth in great detail. You see, starlight is actually made of multiple wavelengths. Clouds are only capable of shielding the optical ones, which are rather short if compared to the red part of the spectrum. The redder wavelengths can pierce through the clouds and reach James Webb's mirror. They also reach Hubble's mirror, but Hubble is blind to infrared radiation. Infrared light from objects in the universe also falls and hits our eyes, but we're not built nor meant to observe that regime of the electromagnetic spectrum. What JWST revealed was thousands of new stars buried within the Eagle Nebula and RHO Ophiuchi complexes. Some of these newborn stars have been observed to emit high-speed jets of material, which in turn lights up surrounding clouds of molecular hydrogen. In this image, the RHO Ophiuchi cloud complex is shown. It is the nearest star-forming area to Earth, and it has been captured here in a close-up image by Webb. Despite being a relatively small and tranquil stellar nursery, the chaotic nature of the image reveals jets emanating from young stars, intersecting with interstellar gas and illuminating the red molecular hydrogen shown in red. If you look closely, you might notice that certain stars exhibit the distinct shadow of a circumstellar disk, indicating the potential formation of future planetary systems. Hey, before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can improve it for you, the viewer. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by making sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily videos. Exoplanetary Atmospheres The study of newborn stars is very fascinating, and so little is known about stars' first evolutionary steps. Studying these stars' disks can also help uncover the complex mechanisms of planetary formation. However, these stars will never showcase any formed planet. They're just too young for planets to have formed. If you want to take a look at exoplanets, you might want to point your instruments to stars in more advanced evolutionary phases. Around them, astronomers have found a handful of planets, and who knows, maybe one of them has all the ingredients to host life as we know it. The very flexible James Webb can address the life potential of these mysterious celestial objects. It cannot directly take pictures of them, but it can do much more. How does it do it? Take spectra, for example. Spectroscopy is highly significant in the explorations conducted by JWST. By utilizing this technique, astronomers can determine the distances of galaxies located far away, examine the composition of stars, and analyze the atmospheric composition of exoplanets. The James Webb Telescope is well suited for each of these tasks, but it is the latter that has provided particularly intriguing findings. Notably, in the planet K218b, which exists within the habitable zone of its star, methane, carbon dioxide, and dimethyl sulfide have been detected. 
On Earth, dimethyl sulfide is exclusively generated by phytoplankton, organisms that reside in the ocean. This discovery raises the possibility of an extended water ocean being present on K218b. Only time will reveal whether this exoplanet is home to these tiny organisms that, akin to phytoplankton on Earth, are responsible for the spectroscopic line of dimethyl sulfide detected by Webb. The Solar System James Webb's amazing capabilities are not limited to the deep universe. This marvel of engineering is also well capable of probing the solar system. During its mission, Webb was tasked with observing Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto together with their moons. The first near-infrared observation of Saturn took place on June 25, 2023. In Webb's picture, Saturn is spotted under a different light. It appears extremely dark, because methane gas present all over the planet in great quantity absorbs almost all of the sunlight falling on the atmosphere, and the infrared radiation signal is therefore very low. However, the icy rings stay relatively bright, leading to the unusual appearance of Saturn in the image. The image of Saturn illuminated in an unprecedented light captivates all who see it. The presence of moons Dion, Enceladus, and Tethys adds to the enchantment. Only a month prior, Webb's assistance led to the discovery of a remarkable water vapor plume emanating from Enceladus' southern pole. This jet was so forceful that it extended a staggering 20 times larger than the moon itself. The inset, showcasing an image from the Cassini orbiter, starkly contrasts Enceladus' size in the Webb image with the magnitude of the water plume. Prior to the Webb telescope's arrival, scientists were aware that plumes like the one depicted in the image were responsible for supplying water to Saturn and its rings. However, they never had the opportunity to witness this process firsthand. Webb provided the first ever glimpse into this phenomenon, allowing researchers to observe it in action. Through a detailed analysis, it was determined that 30% of the water remains within the rings, while the remaining 70% escapes and provides water to the rest of Saturn's system. Enceladus, an ocean world, holds immense scientific importance and is considered one of the most intriguing targets within our solar system. Did you notice how our eyes are starting to get accustomed to the unique style of pictures delivered by James Webb? James Webb's images are truly one of a kind and easily recognizable. Let's take a look at this particular image. At first glance, it may resemble Saturn with its rings, but it's actually Neptune as observed by Webb. The picture captures Neptune's seven moons, Galatea, Naiad, Thalassa, Despina, Proteus, Larissa, and Triton. Can you spot Triton? It shines brightly in this Webb portrait, accompanied by the signature diffraction spike seen in many of Webb's images. If you want to know more about Neptune as seen by Webb, we have already made a video for you. Check it out. To really understand how amazing James Webb's pictures are, let's compare them to pictures taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Look at these images of Uranus, for example. When you put them next to each other, you can see that the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is way better at taking pictures in infrared than NASA's Hubble. Back in 1986, Voyager 2, a space probe that's still sending data 45 years after it launched, found two new faint rings around Uranus during a flyby. This added to the total number of rings, making it 11. Interestingly, only Voyager 2 and the Keck Observatory on Earth could see these two new rings clearly. Hubble, even though it saw two other faint outer rings 20 years ago, making the total known rings 13, didn't see the ones Voyager 2 found. The difference is in how they see things. Hubble looks at ultraviolet, visible and a little bit of infrared light, while JWST looks at the whole infrared spectrum. What makes Webb special is its much bigger mirror, which gives us better, more detailed pictures in infrared compared to Hubble. This really shows in its amazing images, especially when looking at cool things like Uranus. On the right side of Uranus, there is a brightening at the pole facing the sun called a polar cap. This cap is unique to Uranus. It shows up when the pole is in direct sunlight in the summer and disappears in the fall. The data from Webb will help scientists figure out how this works. Near the edge of the polar cap, there's a bright cloud and some fainter features just beyond the cap. On the planet's left side, there's another very bright cloud. These clouds are normal for Uranus and infrared, and they're probably connected to storms. Hey, if you're still around, just a quick reminder that we've already delved into most of the content featured in this video in greater detail in our earlier videos on the channel.
Choose your favorite James Webb discoveries and explore them in more depth by checking out those videos. The Most Distant Star in the Universe Did you know that according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, bodies with mass can deform the space-time around them? Yes, you heard it right. The greater the mass of the object, the more significant the deformation of space-time. When light passes through these deformed regions of space-time, it gets diverted and bent to varying degrees depending on its relative position to the mass causing the space-time deformation. Galaxy clusters are among the most massive objects in the universe, and consequently their deformation effect is extremely high. Gravitational lensing gives us the chance to look at some of the furthest objects in the universe, objects that we would not be able to spot if it weren't for general relativity. In 2022, Hubble discovered Arendelle, a star in the Whale constellation. This can be found at the enormous distance of 12.9 billion years from us. This means we are observing it as it was almost 13 billion years ago, which makes it the oldest and most distant star we know of in the entire universe. Arendelle was discovered by chance, but astronomers decided to follow it up with Webb. The main reason behind this choice is that Hubble's observations have not been sufficient to give enough information about Arendelle's mass as most of the information on the star is enclosed in its infrared emission, which Hubble is not able to detect. Here's where James Webb kicks in. Using the infrared wavelength sensitive instrument on board Webb, observations have revealed that Arendelle is a blue supergiant star with a mass between 50 and 100 times that of the Sun. It is twice as hot as the Sun and approximately a million times more luminous. Due to its mass, Arendelle is expected to explode in a supernova within a few million years. Astronomers have also identified hints in the data of a possible companion to Arendelle, a cool, redder and less luminous star, which will require further analysis and observations for confirmation. Webb's Arendelle observation has allowed astronomers to open a new window into the properties of the primordial universe. All the physics of the stars known to us is based on the assumption that all stars in the universe have the same properties as those directly observed around us in the Milky Way. Being able to directly see a star so far away allows for an investigation into whether this assumption is correct or not. If not, it could disrupt current knowledge about the universe. Additionally, the observation of Arendelle is another step, according to astronomers, towards eventually detecting the so-called Population 3 stars which are the first stars formed in the universe. These stars are made up only of hydrogen and helium, but have never been observed before. Will James Webb unveil their secrets? NGC 5068 Although the primary focus of the James Webb telescope is to gather valuable scientific data, there are instances where the visually stunning images it captures are considered valuable scientific discoveries themselves. An excellent example of this is the breathtaking portrait of NGC 5068, a spiral galaxy located approximately 17 million light years away. This galaxy stands out due to its extraordinary rate of star formation. By utilizing the various instruments on board the telescope, a team of astronomers successfully captured the galaxy's beauty in great detail. These images not only aid in the comprehension of star formation and evolution, including those similar to our own solar system, but they also serve as amazing wallpapers for cell phones. This picture showcases an assembly of countless tiny stars forming a dense whitish bar, which serves as the galaxy's focal point. Intricately woven clusters of dust, clumps, and filaments gracefully follow the spiral's arm's twists, creating an almost skeletal structure. Hidden within the dust, one can distinguish the presence of large, radiant bubbles of red gas further enhancing the captivating tapestry of NGC 5068 with an ethereal touch. Jupiter Let's leave this galaxy behind and come back to the Milky Way. More precisely, let's go at around 8 kiloparsecs from the center of the Milky Way. Here you can find the solar system, and within it, there's Jupiter. A mesmerizing planet, especially if you look at it through Webb's lenses. The telescope took a wide-field view of the enormous gas giant and its faint rings. Yes, if there's one thing you learned today is that, well, basically all planets have rings, not just Saturn. In this pic, the fuzzy spots in the lower background are likely galaxies photobombing this Jovian view. This one image sums up the science of our Jupiter system program, which studies the dynamics and chemistries of Jupiter itself, 
its rings, and its satellite system. But Webb decided to take yet another picture. This time, it is Jupiter close up. Jupiter is a planet full of intense weather phenomena like storms, winds, auroras, and extreme temperature and pressure conditions. Recently, the James Webb Space Telescope from NASA has captured new images of this fascinating planet. By observing Jupiter through Webb, scientists hope to gain further insight into its inner workings. In one of the images composed of multiple shots taken by Webb, the auroras can be seen stretching high above both the northern and southern poles of Jupiter. These auroras glow in reddish hues due to the use of a specific filter, which also brings out the reflection of light from the lower clouds and upper hazes. Another filter highlighting yellows and greens reveals swirling hazes around the poles. Furthermore, a third filter emphasizing blues displays light reflected from the planet's deeper main cloud. Interestingly, the Great Red Spot, a well-known storm on Jupiter that is large enough to engulf Earth, appears white in these images, as do other clouds on the planet. This is because they reflect a significant amount of sunlight. Spiral Galaxies Family Portrait Webb has recently been occupied with photographing several nearby spiral galaxies, precisely 19 of them. This marks the beginning of a larger ongoing project known as FANGS, which stands for Physical and High Angular Resolution in Nearby Galaxies. The primary objective of this endeavor is to comprehend the interaction between small-scale gas and star formation physics, galactic structure, and the evolution of galaxies. The sheer beauty of these spiral galaxies is absolutely incredible. I mean, look at them. These images are capturing the essence of millions and millions of stars. Some of them are spread throughout the galaxy's spiral arms, but others are clumped together in star clusters. Some stars haven't yet fully formed, and you can find them encased in the gas and dust that feed their growth. Ring Nebula Just as Webb can observe newly formed stars, it is also able to capture breathtaking images of their demise. Consider the Ring Nebula. It is the outcome of the final stages in the life cycle of a star similar to our Sun. As a star like the Sun depletes its nuclear fuel, it goes through a series of changes. In this particular case, the central star has expelled its outer layer of gas into space, forming a luminous shell of ionized gas. The remaining central star situated at the core of the nebula is a white dwarf, a dense and hot remnant of its former self. This is how Hubble was seeing it. The colors observed in the ring nebula result from different gases within the nebula becoming ionized by the intense ultraviolet radiation emitted by the central star. Located roughly 2,000 light years away from Earth, this celestial object is a favorite target for amateur astronomers due to its unique appearance and notable brightness. The James Webb Space Telescope, however, aids in distinguishing the most intricate details. Furthermore, upon closer inspection, one can notice the presence of stars that extend beyond the obscuring dust. Webb's infrared capabilities make this possible, enabling it to consistently peer further into the depths of space. Webb's Collection During these two years, Webb captured numerous images that cannot all be featured in this video. However, we have compiled a collection of other remarkable shots to provide you with a glimpse. Prepare to witness stunning images encompassing galaxies, supernovae, moons, nebulae, and planes. Here they unfold before you. Regardless of whether you are a researcher or simply a fan of astrophysics and science as a whole, it is undeniable that James Webb's images are transforming the world and our understanding of the universe. Each time one observes these pictures, it is impossible not to appreciate the stunning beauty of our universe. Words cannot adequately convey the emotions that these images awaken within us, and it is exciting to ponder the incredible and groundbreaking discoveries that may lie ahead. Perhaps the future holds a day that will forever alter the course of humanity. Meanwhile, let's enjoy what we have and always remember to keep it curious. That's all for this video. What would you like us to cover next? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below and stay tuned for our next videos. I'll see you soon on the channel.